Hey everyone, so I'm having an amazing day today and I hope you are as well. So last lecture, I'm not going to lie, that was a bit boring. But now this is where the things get start getting really interesting when we actually talk about the practical stuff, right? So in the last lecture, if I, if I had to sum everything up, everything we talked about in one formula, that is this, S equals R theta. I know that last time we wrote this as theta equals S upon R, but if you just rearrange that, you get this formula, S equals to R theta, where S is the arc length, R is the radius, and theta is called the angular displacement which we also talked about is just a fancy word for angle right and apart from this we also talked a lot about radian measure and whatnot so how is the radian defined converting from radians to degrees and the other way around so that is all uh, that we talked about in the previous video but now we'll actually be quantifying some more stuff how do we actually define how do we actually capture the nuances of circular motion using different quantities. So last time out we were just talking about angle, right? And again, keep in mind this word angular displacement, right? So we are now talking about angular quantities as opposed to what we would be talking about, for example, in AS, where we just used to be talking about linear displacement. This is angular displacement. Similarly, now we, uh, in this video, we are going to talk about angular velocity as compared with what we used to talk about, which was linear velocity. So now, for example, if we have to define as to how fast an object is tracing out circles, because the topic is called circular motion, we'll be talking about something called the angular velocity or the angular speed. So pretty much like linear velocity, angular velocity is the the rate of change of angular displacement again we have used this word a lot in AS as well rate of change simply means that this formula has time as a denominator right and if time is in the denominator what's in the numerator in the numerator we have angular displacement another way to define this could be like this and the examiner actually prefers this so that would be this, that the angular velocity is defined as the angle swept out by the radius and this angle would obviously be at the center of the circle per unit time. So the symbol for angular speed of uh, angular velocity is omega. Obviously, uh, we're talking about velocity here, not speed. And truth be told, this distinction is not very important with regards to our examination. Velocity only has this that we would have the direction specified. For example, is something moving clockwise or anti-clockwise in a circle, right? So the symbol is omega, right? Another Greek letter and this can be written like this. So whatever angle is swept out in some time, right? So the change in uh, angular displacement divided by the change in time. Now for someone who is taking math, they might appreciate this a bit more as well that this can also be written as the time derivative of the angular displacement but if you don't get this don't worry because uh, we are talking about uniform circular motion so omega anyway will always be constant so now we'll actually be uh, putting together what we learned in the last lesson which is this formula s equals to r theta and this relationship that we just talked about which is omega is the rate of change. So omega is really the angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement. So here we have an object which is traveling at a constant speed v in a circle of radius r, right? And obviously while traveling, it's tracing out some angle and also producing a sector with some arc length. So what we just talked about is tracing out some arc length, right, uh, as per this small angle. So this relationship, which was S equals to R theta, if I'm talking about this small angle and the small arc length that it produces, I can say that delta S 
would be delta r theta right the changes in r and theta but if you're talking about a circle we know that it has a fixed radius so the radius isn't going to change so then i can also just write this as r delta theta so now if i try to link this with speeds so i already have the i already have the delta theta here but if i want this in terms of omega the angular velocity i would need to divide both sides of my equation by a delta t right that change in time so now what does this turn into so delta s upon delta t this thing here now this is uh, something which has to do with approximations really so you can just remember it this way that delta s upon delta t is the linear velocity of this object right so delta s upon delta t here this becomes v and on the other side of the equation you still have r so r remains as it is and then delta theta upon delta t this is just equal to omega so this is the relationship that we came up with and this is going to be very important in this chapter not only with regards to helping us solve some of the questions but this will also actually help us to derive some more formula so some more stuff that we'll be working with is this idea about angular velocity so for example if you have an object in circular motion let's say it starts off this uh, it starts off at this point which is at the top of the circle and then it goes about and does one full revolution in some time period of t seconds so for this i can actually say that the angular velocity can again be written as the angular displacement divided by the time taken to cover that angular displacement so in this case if it's doing a full rotation it actually goes through an angular displacement of 2 pi radians right so just like how 360 degrees used to describe one full rotation 2 pi in radians describes one full rotation and the time uh, the time taken for this uh, entire rotation is the time period right so i can also write this as 2 pi upon capital t and this one also will be using a lot especially in the next chapter and then if i try to write this time period instead as frequency so we've also studied waves so if i think about this as 2 pi times 1 upon the time period so 1 upon the time period can be thought of as the frequency of rotation right so these are a few relationships that we came up with in this video so summing up what we learned in this and the previous video so the first equation was this one from the definition of uh, angles and radians the other one was this so omega the angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement so let me just add bullets to these as well and then we also talked about omega as 2 pi upon capital T which can also be written as 2 pi times f the frequency of rotation and the last one was this one v equals to r omega so if we quickly do a few questions assessing these concepts while keeping this formula in front of us as well so so let's have a look at these questions so the first question says a car is traveling along a circular path with linear speed 18 meters per second right so this is v if we are talking about this in terms of the symbols and angular speed 0.3 radians per second what is the radi uh, what is the radius of curvature of the track so this is the linear speed so this is talking about v this is the angular speed this is talking about omega and we are really asked r so we can use this last equation v equals to r omega so v is so v is r omega let's first write down the formula v is 18 r is what we need to find and omega is 0.3 so using this if we calculate the radius of the track this turns out to be 60 meters the next question a ball on a track travels round a complete loop 
in a time of 1.4 seconds. So this is one full rotation. Calculate the average angular speed of the ball. So now we can use this formula because this is the time period for this full loop, right, for one complete rotation. So we can use this one. So omega would be 2 pi upon t. So 2 pi divided by t. So here the time period is 1.4. So 2 pi upon 1.4 is 4.487 because t was to 2sf let's also write the answer to 2sf that would be 4.5 radians per second.